right now I feel like I'm running an infirmary for poultry <laughs> because I now have a guinea that is missing all its tail feathers and its butt has been pecked off. And I have uh, a baby chick, a baby Easter egg that we hatched in the incubator at the kids' school and it has splayed legs. So, because we didn't have enough going on, um, in the middle of my poultry infirmary, we went out into the garage where Ryan was staying in his brooder, Ryan gosling our guard goose, and Ryan's right eye had started to get very inflamed, and we were having, um, at first I thought, oh, maybe he's getting his knob. Um, it's way too early for that, and it was not. It was that whole, above the eye, there was just this big swollen um, piece, and So, um, very frustrating, very upsetting, started doing some searches, started asking questions, and basically what it came down to was, it looks like maybe a sinus infection, they've got sinuses up there, and sometimes the geese um, will eat the pine shavings, and we had not been out on grass, and so there were some recommendations, one was for VetRx, and it honestly, it smells like Vicks Vapor Rub, uh, but I was putting that in his water, um, my husband was like, I think he needs more than just a chicken water. I think that, I think he needs to be dipping his head. So we put a bowl in there. My husband's very smart. Like he's critically thinking smart. Like he just has good common sense, um, more so than me. And so we started doing that and we started bringing him out. Um, not long after that, we bought a kiddie pool. It's had a really rough day yesterday. So we lost one of our guineas. I've got one inside that's actually, um, I think it's healing. We're gonna keep putting on antibiotic spray on it. And I know when that thing starts moving and trying to get out of the box, it's time to go back outside. So the the rear end was pretty raw. That's, I don't understand, but that seems to be how the hawks, um, a lot of times will attack them, is they'll, they'll attack their bottoms and either rip their intestines out from there or they'll just completely disembowel them. Um, they're awful, awful critters. So in Texas, especially Central Texas, I didn't know this till we moved out here. Um, so I'm about to tell a really long story that basically involves, in Texas, one of the things that we deal with is turkey vultures and black vultures. And I know in, in my mind, vultures are scavengers and they eat dead things. But here, we actually have a gang of turkey vultures and scavengers, um, black vultures, that travel with a hawk. And the hawk is the one that takes out the animals, and then the turkey vultures and the black vultures come in, and then they feed on the prey. And so, very interesting. Um, in fact, I said, that's not possible. That would not happen. And then we experienced it. So... That's what this long story that's about to follow is about. I apologize. But we've experienced it and we've seen it. And and it's really made us more cautious, if nothing else, for the animals that we have to really be protective of them. Um, whether we have baby chickens or the guineas or whether our mamas are calving, I think it's really important that we're cautious and we're careful and we're aware that this is a possibility uh, before we lose one of our, our little new babies. And this happened last year and that's that's actually i called it a massacre because at the time we had 16 uh guineas upsetting we came home one day from church and they weren't here and they're always here the guineas are always here and so um ephraim and i went and started looking and we found two of them that their heads had been ripped off um they've been completely disemboweled feathers everywhere and we were like there's they're 16 or 14, I guess, at that point, and we couldn't find them. And so we kept looking and kept looking. And so we found one in the barn. And then the next thing we found um, some others on the other side of the fence and um, in the brambles. And, and, and they were just hiding and they were actually being quiet because these are very loud birds. They're not quiet birds. And so they were being very quiet, which is awesome. And so we got over there and we, we only lost two that day, but then that happened again. And I know... Um, 
my sweet dad is like, we, we need to, we need to have something to protect them. And I'm like, but their job is grazing on the bugs that we get deer in our front yard and, um, the deers bring ticks and that's what they eat. They go eat the ticks. We haven't had a tick issue. I think I found the whole time we've been here, I found one tick on our dog and that was when we first got her. Um, they eat the bugs, they go out. I mean, they do help prevent a lot of bug issues here. And, and so, you know, and we, we eat their eggs if we can find them. <laughs> Sometimes they hide them. Sometimes they randomly drop them, but they're just, they help keep the snakes away. Now, have we had snakes? Yes, because on 16 acres out in the middle of nowhere, you are going to have snakes, but usually the snakes are not out in the field that we're finding. It's the ones that are close to the house and the guineas aren't usually that close to the house. So, um, but in the front yard, like they do help they're very noisy they do keep them away and if they catch one they'll eat it um they'll just tear it up this is nugget our baby easter egger with splayed legs uh, a baby chick a baby easter egger that we hatched in the incubator at the kids school and it has splayed legs and so we're doing pt for that and so it's requiring a lot it's requiring a lot of just nurturing and food and water and positioning and checking and repositioning and um it's a lot of work okay so one of our babies here we go Ephraim what is the diagnosis for these little legs that are going both ways splayed legs yeah it kind of reminds me of a breech baby where their legs just go up by their ears um it's not able to walk like this and we're still in the first few days of life so there's actually a way to fix this with a band-aid try not to get the furthest there we go. Oh, there. This poor chick's like, uh, I'm over this. Okay, you want to take the thing off that I messed up? Dingy. Just remember it's connected to a leg. It's the second one you've done this. I've never had a chicken with splayed legs. I honestly thought that it would not be compatible with life. So I was surprised to find, hold the sticky part, hold the sticky part. I was surprised to find on YouTube that actually there is a way to help them. So you're supposed to get up by their knees, which is hard because this little guy has a lot of feathers, a little baby fur, and then hit it back over. And that should help our baby chick to start standing. And, and, and then, well, I don't want it on this. So one of the things that you can actually give chicks splayed legs if you have a smooth surface when they're born and they walk on it, it makes their legs go like that. So here, I'm gonna give them back to you to put. So we also noticed that Nugget has curled feet and that makes it very difficult for Nugget to walk even if I fix the splayed legs. Here's Nugget the next day. As you can see, that left foot is still curling a little bit. We've kept the hobble on, the band-aids around the legs. He's still really struggling to walk and to move. So what I was saying is a lot of farmers, ranchers, homesteaders even, you only have so many hours in the day and you only have so many resources. and. Sometimes, as my husband is a little different than me, I am everything, if I can take care of it, I will. <laughs> he even said, he was like, at the end of the day, this is a $2 chicken. At the end of the day, this is a $3 bird that we can replace. And while I understand that mentality, I also have the mentality of, they are my responsibility. And if I'm going to be a responsible poultry owner, uh, farmer, homesteader, any of those things, I need to be ready to have a plan. And if it's something that has a chance, I need to be set up to take care of that. And yeah, at the end of the day, guineas don't last that long. The chickens don't last that long, but they're mine and they matter to me. And so you will you will hear plenty of farmers and plenty of people talk like, that's a coal. Coal means get rid of it, kill it, be done with it. But um, my personality and just kind of how I feel. Um... So 
St. Francis. I don't know, like my thought is that we were put here to care for these things. And so I, um, I do take that responsibility pretty seriously and I don't feel like it's a lost cause. This is the little guinea male that was attacked. And as you can see, they were not nice at all. They attacked his bottom, they pulled feathers out, he's bald in certain areas, he did have one pretty big puncture wound. But I was able to corner him and um, he let me take care of him, which is unusual. <laughs> Here I was able to jump over our neighbor's fence and find one of our little guineas that was walking through the field over there. It looked like a whack-a-mole, his little head popping up and down, but it was definitely scared. There they are. There was one more guinea across the neighbor's fence hiding in one of the cedar trees. I had a little harder time getting that one out, but it did follow the other three and I was able to herd them home. And I know you're gonna think it's weird, but I do talk to our animals, mostly because I'm here with them all the time. <laughs> and they they kind of grow on you, but I got it into a corner of the fence because Daryl was chasing it, it was getting really upset. And I got it kind of cornered and I just squatted down next to it. And I said, listen, I'm gonna help you. Take a breath. And I talked to this guinea until I could get the box. Daryl came back up to the house to get the box and we put it in the box. And I just told the guinea, I'm going to do everything I can to help you. And if we get to a point that I can't help you, then I'm going to put you out of your misery. And um, sometimes I think animals hear us. I think they understand. So last night, Daryl needed to get back to work. And like I said, I, I didn't want to stress it out anymore. Um, I just kind of left it alone, made sure it had water and put electrolyte water in there for it. And um, came back yesterday evening with Ephraim. And Ephraim actually sat and um, helped me. It was not fun for him. He does not like blood and guts. Um, but helped me just clean the area. And this little guinea just sat in my lap. And like, oh, Where they got him? Mm -hmm. It's not really a good time. I really need to tell what do you need to tell me? Zuzu and Lulu and um, Ryan Gosling. Uh -huh. Ryan Gosling's trying to fix Kazoo and Zuzu and Lulu. It's okay, baby. This is stressful because they're not used to it. Like, we never hold them. Can I have a paper towel to dab? So this medicine, because they're outside, you know, in general, animals are a little dirtier than we are. But because they're outside, um, this is an antibacterial, but it's also an antifungal. So like when Chunk had ringworm somehow on his nose, um, it I helped. That mm -hmm. It helped with that. But I mean, they can lose feathers and they can have some cuts. So I mean, they got into meat, like muscle and meat over here, and that's pretty deep. Oh. And I don't know if it's better to take the feathers off completely and just let it heal, which we know. I mean, we saw it with Willie. We saw it with Jerry. They both healed pretty well when they just were left to do it. Will it peck at it or not? So I haven't noticed with guineas I, that they're as bad about it as the chickens are. I mean, 
this guy's pretty tore up. Which I can see better. Can you help my headlamp to actually get on the bird? No. Push it, yeah. Not working. I could use another paper towel. You are doing so good, buddy. You are being so good. Bubby, this is probably where I'm gonna need a little help because he's he's standing. Ugh. Like, what's going on down here? Move out of the way. I'm trying to move feathers. Mm, it's cut up. The puncture wound up there is kind of gross. Though. Is that pus or fat coming out? That's adipose, yeah. That's meat. Mm. So I can't see this to spray it. Do you think you can grab that spray bottle and give him a good spray down there? Underneath? Gentle, yeah. Oh, that's a punch. You want to saturate it, like completely saturate it. Just, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay, buddy. I could not have done this without Ephraim's help, even if he did gag. Oh, okay. Oh. All right. Yeah. I did it. All right. I need more napkins. Clean up, please. Last night, the five remaining guineas and Willie the bald chicken were able to return to the backyard near the chicken coop. They stayed pretty close last night. So our little guy stayed inside for another day. And that second day when I went in there to feed our guinea, um, he bit me. He bit my finger, which actually made me realize like he's probably doing okay. And so he started eating, he was drinking well, um, did really well, still inside the box, still had food and water with a little bit of tool over the box. And then on the third day, I went to a Mother's Day program at Paxton School and received a phone call and a picture, this one, of mom, what do I do with this bird? And I had said, if at any point this bird decides that it's ready to jump out of the box, we will let it outside. So my response was, open the door and tell him to go. The night after, the guinea was still kind of walking around and happy and it seemed like things were going really, really well. And um, then I started to notice the other guineas were kind of like, mm, you're a danger. And, and I've seen this with birds before. I've seen it with our chickens. If they feel like you're injured, they actually may destroy you. Um, and, and I think it's just like, it's, it's survival. I don't know um, exactly what happened to that guinea, but I do know that we eventually quit seeing it in a couple days. And then a few days after that, a chunk on one of his runs around our dog, he brought us the remains, parts of the remains of that guinea. So it, um, it did not survive. I don't know the vultures to me, vultures are gross. They're dirty. I don't know if it was disease. I don't know if the ants got it. I don't know if the vultures got it. I don't know if the other, the other guineas took care of it and just said, you're not safe. You're making us um, more at risk. Um, and I'm sad. I'm sad, but at the same time, I feel like that's unfortunately a very hard part of what we do here, um, of farm life, of raising animals, of of really just that, my boss calls it the circle of life. She's like, oh, y'all do the whole circle of life there. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then not long after that, our little nugget, our little splayed leg chick, um, we just got to a point Nugget wasn't growing. I was not able to fix the hips. I had a very emotional day with Nugget. Nugget kept falling on 
on his backside. And um, a lot of times when we have chicks, when they're sick, they, they'll do that. And um, I was just very emotional. Poor Daryl um, having to deal with me, but I'm like, I, I did, I spent a lot of time preparing Paxton and I spent a lot of time preparing Daryl and just saying, I, I'm struggling because I did everything that I can, which was the goal, like everything that I can to help this chick and then eventually um, Nugget passed as well. So the good thing um, out of all of my chickens and, and poultry infirmary, my guinea and my chick and then Ryan with Ryan's eye, um, Ryan's eye did heal. And I do feel like it was probably uh, some kind of sinus blockage. And we used the Vet RX and I used a lot of herbs and, and we got Ryan a pool so Ryan could dip uh, his head in the pool and that all seemed to really help. So there was one good thing that came out of all of this, but man, the loss. And I know um, we fought hard. We fought hard for our little birds, but um, unfortunately that's, that's the hard part of what we do here. And, um, and trying to teach my children, you know, about life and loss. And there's so many lessons that come with homesteading and with farm life and raising animals and even growing a garden. And um, I'm so grateful for those lessons, but at the same time, they're very hard. They're hard on me still as an adult. And um, and so I hope that I'm giving my kids the tools they need and, and walking them through some of the things that are difficult. We're gonna go through this in life. Um, and let me tell you, the one good thing that has come out of all of this is that Ryan's eye did heal and did get better. And so I'm super ecstatic that we still have our guard goose. We did not lose our Ryan Gosling. And um, I feel like he's happy. He's got his little kitty pool and he gets in it and gets out of it. And I can't wait to show you some footage of that. But he's hilarious and we love him. And it's just been really fun to see him. He he is so much bigger than the other chicken, so it's been kind of funny to watch that. But um, his eye is healed, that sinus is healed, and he seems a lot happier being able to put his head in the water. And so I just, you know, everything that I had been told was just treat him like a chicken. No, they, they need a little bit more than a chicken. That's okay, we figured it out. Thank you for joining us. I know it's been, nobody wants to see all of that, but I appreciate you guys walking through this with us and, and just being on this journey with us. So um, I'm hoping I can take you on a garden tour the next time that we meet.